So I was walking down the hall today, and a friend of mine came up to me and said, Vince, you look fatigued. And I said, I do? He's like, yeah, everything all right? I was like, well, now that you mention it, I feel fatigued. And you know what? I am fatigued, guys. I'm tired. I am so tired. I woke up at 12.30 this morning. That's how tired I am. But despite that, we're going to chug along because this is the Vince Lerno Podcast, episode 19. On today's show, we're talking about Netflix renewing Arrested Development for a fifth season. Anya Taylor-Joy and Macy Williams join the New Mutants movie, new trailers for the Emoji movie, and Star Trek Discovery, and much, much more. So sit back and relax because the Vince Lerno podcast starts right now. Well, hey guys, welcome to the Vince Lerno podcast on this Monday, May 22nd, 2017. I'm your host, Vince Salerno. And before we get on to our top five today, we have some sad news to report. Uh, first off, Chris Cornell, the 52-year-old singer, lead singer of Soundgarden, has died at age 52. It has been confirmed that he... Well, he uh, committed suicide, which is terrible. Um, you know, he is obviously he's a singer, uh, lead singer of Soundgarden. Um, I am not a huge fan of the band, I, only because I've never really gotten into them. Uh, the only thing I know them from is they did the song "Live to Rise" for the Avengers movie, which is a fantastic song. So I know friends who. Um, are struggling with depression and suicide issues, uh, stuff like that. So uh, it's it's a very important issue uh, to me to prevent suicides and help victims of suicide uh, or people who are struggling with depression. Uh, it's just a, it's just an incredibly sad thing that people believe that um, death is the answer and. Uh, I hope that myself and many other people can show others that um, that is not the answer and that um, there is happiness found in life. And then also today it was announced that, I'm, ho I'm hoping I'm saying this right, Roger Isles, um, the Fox News founder, has died at age 77. Um, as I said, um, Roger was the founder of Fox News, a news um, network, which I pay a lot of attention to, despite some controversies in Fox News, which I'm not happy about. So let's just take a moment to, um, moment of silence to remember them. Thank you both for your contributions to uh, news and music and media in general. Um, you both will be missed. God bless. And once again, let's let's really, guys, take a stand to help um, depression people struggling with depression um, and prevent future suicides from happening. It starts with us. It really does. All right, I know that's a kind of a sour note to move on to, but we got to move on. Let's get right into the top five. Actually, there is a quite a few stories um, that have come out. I'm only so I'm actually going to cover six instead of five, but. Regardless, it's the top five, so here we go. Number one, Arrested Development has been renewed for a fifth season by Netflix. The show was originally on um, Fox, I believe. I don't remember what network it was on, but um, it ran for three seasons, then it was canceled, and then it got picked up by Netflix, and it was renewed for a fourth season, which um, was received by critics in a mixed way. Like, some liked it, some didn't like it at all. We've been waiting... Oh, since 2013 for a new season, and it's finally happening. And I'm a huge fan of that show. I, I love Arrested Development. It's one of my favorite comedy shows ever. And the fourth season, I agree, was not the best. It was not the strongest season, and it was not a great way to bring the cast back. It, um, basically, the reason why it didn't work, I think, is because... The cast was, uh, each episode 
focused on one cast member from the main crew. And the, the reason why that show works so well is because of the family dynamic and the chemistry behind the family and their relationship. It's a very um, destructive and very um, broken relationship this family, but it's hilarious to watch. They're all very narcissistic, except for J Jason Bateman's character. And it's just funny to watch these, these, ups, these just snobbish and stupid people do really stupid things. It's, it was hysterical. And, uh, and to see, to have that come back is great. I don't know how, what the, the plot is, but, um, I'm hoping they've gotten the schedules lined up so that everybody can come back for all 12, 13 episodes, whatever, how many of the episodes they do, because um, I want to see that dynamic again play out in these episodes. I don't want to see one episode focus on one character isolated from the rest of the family. I want to see all of them interacting together in crazy, stupid situations, just like in the original three seasons. So I'm super excited for the show to come back. Uh, I hope it's just as good as the first three seasons. All right, number two. Uh, Anya Taylor-Joy and Macy Williams have been cast in Josh Boone's X-Men The New Mutants movie, which will come out in 2018 on April 13th. Now, I bring this story up because I've become interested in Anya Taylor-Joy. I've not seen a lot of films she's been in. I've seen bits of The Witch and uh, really intrigued by that movie. I'm really intrigued by Split. I really want to see Split. And now that the, apparently there's a crossover sequel happening with the Unbreakable movie and Split with Anya Taylor-Joy's character returning for that movie, I am even more interested in her acting abilities and uh, seeing what kind of staying power, franchise power she has. Um, and then also Macy Williams, who's been in Game of Thrones, has been in a fair amount of uh, movies over the past couple of years. She was in Doctor Who. She was fantastic in Doctor Who, I think. Um, and then also it's the X-Men franchise. This is a franchise that has uh, kind of been ha having a couple duds and slowly coming back to um, prominence with Deadpool and Logan, both R-rated properties. This, I'm assuming, would be a more PG-13 property they'd want to get the kids back in here for this since there are kids but they could take a uh, r-rated approach i mean i think fox has found their niche with these superhero phones to differentiate them between marvel and dc and that's to make them r-rated they can take these darker approaches to these to these movies and make them just full-blown r-rated mature things that have never been done in X-Men before. I mean, I don't think they're going to actually do that, but it'd be interesting if they actually did that with the main X-Men films. Now, I saw X-Men Apocalypse about a month ago, and I didn't like it. It's a, it's a really bad superhero movie. It's like, it's almost Batman v Superman bad. It's just, it's a, it's a bad way to end that uh, X-Men first class trilogy, and it's a bad sign for the future of X-Men, the main X-Men timeline, that is. So I hope this movie will kind of renew f my faith and other people's faith in this franchise um, and just let us know that this movie will be good. I mean, I, I have confidence. Like, Josh Boone is a, you know, he's an indie director. He's done a couple of projects, uh, have been somewhat well-received by critics, I believe. You got great talent and... You got the potential James McAvoy coming back to play Professor X, which I totally believe he will. So, yeah, I guess we'll we'll really see. But the cast has got me intrigued, and the plot has got me intrigued. So let's just hope for the best for this new installment in the X Men franchise, and that it's not anything like X Men Apocalypse because that was really bad, really bad. All right, number three. We got the first official trailer for the new CBS Star Trek series, Star Trek Discovery. I don't remember the name of the cast members because they're just a lot of people I just don't know. Sorry. It looks really cool. I don't know if it looks interesting. It, it, the trailer kind of bored me, to be honest. 
And I'm hearing a lot, already a lot of controversy from Trekkies that it messes up the timeline because of the something with the uniforms, or the uniforms don't match up with the timeline of something something weird like that. A nitpick, I think. I, I don't know. I'm a, I'm a Trek fan. I like the original Star, Star Trek series. I love the movies. I love the new movies. I don't think I'm a... I wouldn't consider myself a Trekkie, though, because I don't obsess over this stuff like I would, like, Star Wars or Marvel movies. That's kind of my niche, if you will. But besides that, it just... It was kind of boring. Like, it's cool, but... There's, I don't know, nothing really caught my eye. Yes, you got Spock's dad in there. That's kind of cool. You got a brief glimpse of Spock as a kid, which makes no sense because isn't he supposed to be, like, you know, a little older if this is 10 years before the original Star Trek when he first goes on to the Enterprise? I don't know. Maybe that is right. I'm not sure. Some interesting prosthetics for aliens. I love the practical effects they have for the aliens. It makes it look really realistic. Uh, the Klingons are there, the Klingons are cool. I don't know, I don't think this is really enough to, to get me excited. I'm definitely intrigued, but I don't know if I'm excited for this movie, so, this movie, this TV show. So, I'll wait for the full series to come out, and I will judge accordingly, but, so far, just kind of a yawn of a trailer. I'm, and I, it hurts me to say that, because I, I want to be excited for this series. I have a friend Eric Jenkins, who loves Star Trek, and he's been looking forward to this, so I gotta, I gotta get his thoughts on this now that I mention it. And I think maybe his thoughts will inform my opinion a lot more, just because I'm not so um, enthralled with the Star Trek franchise. But we'll see. I once again, I will wait till the show comes out and judge accordingly. But right now, not super impressed. Okay, number four. Looks like some hackers have stolen a unnamed Disney movie and are requesting that Bob Iger, the CEO of Disney, pay them a ransom or else they will release the film in 5 to 20 minute increments online before the film's release. I'm sorry. It's, it's things like this that piss me off. I get angry when I hear about these stories. Uh, the movie... I think is revealed to be Pirates of the Caribbean Dead Man Tendle Tales, the fifth movie in the Pirates franchise. It just makes me mad because me personally, and I hope everybody else agrees, I believe that film piracy is a spit in the face, an F you, a middle finger to filmmakers and the whole filmmaking industry. It's saying... I don't care about supporting your movie. I just want to see some cool stuff. And, you know, I mean, not to discredit people, people want to see the movies because they love content, but they want to see it for free. But the point is, if you really love a movie, you'll go out and pay the 20 bucks or the 10 bucks or the 5 bucks, or you pay the $3.99 on Amazon or the $15 on Amazon to buy the movie and its bonus features to support the movie. Because that's how that's how the studio makes money, that's how the director makes money, that's how the um, distributors make money, that's how the theaters make money, if you go out and see the movie in theaters. And that's why it's such a spit in the face to pirate movies. Because you're saying, I don't care about supporting you. I just want to see your movie. I don't care if you have enough money to make another movie. I just want to see this movie. And I, I just think we all need to stop with piracy, piracy, video piracy, and just piracy in general. This is kind of ironic that this is, they stole Pirates of the Caribbean. And pirates stole Pirates of the Caribbean. What a world. So... I, I hope Disney does not pay the ransom. They're not going to, according to reports. So I hope they avoid paying the ransom, and I hope that the FBI catches these guys and gives them a fair and just punishment, because make them pay for the movie. <laughs> make them pay for the, the movie they stole, and then send them to jail for a couple of years or something. So I, ho I hope the FBI catches these guys. I hope Disney gets their film back, and I hope that this movie 
is not hurt box office wise by this controversy and this this just insult to the filmmakers at Disney. I have high hopes for this movie, so um, I am not going to let these these idiots ruin it for me and for other people. So, regardless, you should go see Pirates of the Caribbean. Don't go see it online if this movie leaks online. Please don't do that. You're only spitting in the face of Disney and the directors of Pirates of the Caribbean. And piracy. <laughs> All right. Next on the list. Number five. Robert Zemeckis and Matthew Vaughn are up for directing the Flash movie. That's all you need to hear. <laughs> I'm I'm really excited about the idea of Math Matthew. I mean, I'm excited about Matthew Vaughn, but I'm more excited about uh, Robert Zemeckis directing a Flash movie. He he's obviously known very well known for making the Back to the Future trilogy, uh, Forrest Gump, the Airplane movie with Denzel Washington, Allied, most recently. He's just a fantastic director. He's an Academy Award winning director. And I think if you make a if you have him direct like a a Back to the Future esque Flash movie, that would be so freaking cool. I think he could if he brings that same sensibility and charm and wit and humor and fun to the Flash that he brought with that he brought to Back to the Future, this could be one of the best DC movies to ever come out. And I, 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 if he does, my excitement for that movie will go up a tremendous amount. And if that Matthew Vaughn gets it, that's fine. I like Matthew Vaughn. Obviously, he directed X-Men First Class. He directed Kingsman, directing Kingsman 2. Could be directing Kingsman 3. Kingsman 1 was fantastic. I have no doubt Kingsman 2 will be just as good, if not better. I actually want... Matthew Vaughn to direct Man of Steel 2. I believe he is in talks to direct that as well. So I guess it kind of depends on which film he chooses. But I think he's going to choose Man of Steel 2. And then Robert Zemeckis will direct The Flash. I really, really want Robert Zemeckis to direct The Flash. I think that would be I think that would be a perfect directing choice if you get Robert Zemeckis. Rooting for you, man. Get that movie. All right, number six, the sixth and final story in our top five. We got another trailer for the Emoji Movie. And, okay, let me, let me, let me be real. I laughed at one thing and one thing only, and that's James Corden playing the thumbs up emoji or the hand face palm emoji or the hand slap emoji or the the big hand emoji whatever emoji it is that is the only thing i laughed at in this entire trailer and i'll admit it he's he's really funny i think james Corden is one of the funniest um late night hosts to come out recently and I'm just, I've just been a huge fan of him ever since Doctor Who. He started out in Doctor Who. Then he got a big presence with, uh, obviously, hosting Late Late Night. Or, wait, yeah, Late Night? I don't remember which one it is. And, obviously, doing Into the Woods. He's got, he, I mean, he's got talent. And it shows in this trailer. He's, he is hilarious as the, the hand emoji. I'm just going to call him the hand emoji. Everything else is just either either frightening or not funny or just downright garbage or just it's, it's just it's terrible i wish jj was here because he and i were ripping on this movie um last time we talked about it when it was announced that patrick stewart would voice the poop emoji um which you know they they put that in there too it's a joke at the end about the poop emoji what should we do after we go to the bathroom Wash our hands? Oh, no. We're number two. It's just terrible. Oh, my gosh. It's just the most non-funny thing I've seen all year. And I get the story. It's kind of cute. The emoji has one... Every emoji has one set of emotion, and they all... and this, But there's this one who is a meh, but he has multiple 
emotions, and he can't do the meh for some reason. Or when he does, it looks really horrific and scary. I believe the villain emoji is this this female emoji with this this like giant s f smile from hell. <laughs> it's the freakiest thing I have ever seen in a cartoon movie. She's got these big eyes, very defined eyebrows, and just the biggest smile you've ever seen on a cartoon character. It is it is truly horrifying. And I don't. I, if I had kids, I would never take my kids to see this movie. Uh, I hope my kids would never even think about seeing this movie. It just, it just looks so bad, so bad. The only thing that's funny about this, like I said, is James Corden. And it's really unfortunate because I looked up Sony's. Sony's the one producing this movie and distributing it. I looked at their upcoming slate, and none of their movies this year really look that great. Like. There's that rough night, raunchy, stupid comedy with Scarlett Johansson, who looks completely out of character and just doesn't care about being there. Uh, that looks terrible. There's a bunch of other movies that are coming out, and I just can't think of them right now from Sony. But just Sony's been having a terrible time trying to make money. Uh, and the Ghostbusters reboot was just one of the many things that did not work. I kind of liked it. But, you know, okay, I'm not going to talk. Like I said, every time I get on Ghostbusters, I will rant about it till the 45-minute mark. So I'm not going to rant about it. But point being, the Emoji movie still looks terrible. The only thing that looks great is James Corden's hand emoji. Funniest thing in the entire trailer. And, I mean, I hope it's funny. I hope it's good. I hope it makes a lot of money for Sony. I hope I'm wrong. I hope it turns out to be the funniest movie of the year, but it just doesn't. It looks like a, a, a uh, ripoff of the Lego movie, to be honest. It just doesn't look good. I've got to stop saying it doesn't look good. One more time. It doesn't look good. That's it. I'm done. All right, that was our top five or top six stories of the week. Running down the list, that was Arrested Development Season 5, Anya Taylor-Joy and Macy Williams cast in New Mutants, Star Trek Discovery trailer, Disney film is stolen by hackers, Robert Zemeckis and Matthew Vaughn up for the Flash movie, and the Emoji movie trailer has been released, and it's terrible. <laughs> oh, one more thing. Uh, for those of you who are wondering if Billy Crudup is actually leaving the Flash movie, he is not. That, re that report has been debunked. He is still on the movie. He shot scenes for Justice League, so he obviously cannot leave. Uh, that easily, and, you know, I hope he doesn't want to leave. I hope that's not the scenario, but he is not leaving. He is still on to play Barry Allen's dad. Okay, on to our topic of the week. This is something that I've been discussing with friends for the past several days, and it's something I'm quite angry about, too, if I'm being honest, and that is the cancellation of Last Man Standing, the ABC comedy starring Tim Allen. So a lot of uh, – ABC has released their you know, new slate of shows that have been renewed or canceled, like uh, Once Upon a Time is being completely redone for season 7 or 8, whatever season they're on. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is renewed for season 5. Inhumans is coming. A bunch of other new shows or old shows have been renewed and confirmed, one of which that got the axe was Last Man Standing. And for those of you who don't know – Last Man Standing is a ABC sitcom starring Tim Allen, who plays a conservative father of three daughters, who owns a Bass Pro Shop-like store. And the show is about him being the only man in his house, uh, surrounded by uh, his wife and his three daughters, and just trying to survive... Uh, try to be a man in a woman's world, <laughs> so to speak. And it's it's been known to have very conservative values. Tim Allen himself is a big conservative, um, even going so far as to support President Donald Trump and uh, bash on President, previous former President Obama, I should say. And 
a lot of people, including myself, have believed that the show got canceled because of these conservative uh, values that the show has, uh, for the last five seasons, has um, put emphasis on. Which makes no sense because, I mean, people tell me that, oh, the show wasn't canceled because it was a conservative show. That's ridiculous. The show was canceled because of uh, uh, ratings and scheduling. It's all part of the numbers and stuff. Really? No. No, no, no. Listen, Last Man Standing was the third highest, the third most successful ABC sitcom on air today. The third most successful sitcom on ABC. The ratings, albeit never grew and never shrunk, they, they had a steady pace. That, that does not, in my book, that does not equal cancellation. You have a steady market of viewers who come back every single week to watch Last Man Standing. It is the third most successful ABC show on the network right now. At least previously, I guess. And you're telling me that scheduling and ratings are the reason why it was canceled. No. No, I'm sorry. I, I, I refuse to believe that. I refuse to buy into that. And I mean, who knows? Maybe it is actually true. I'm not going to be the one to say that the people don't know what they're talking about. I'm not an insider. I don't have any insider information. I'm just going off what I know to be true, what I believe. And I just, I just don't buy into that. That's just a very... That's just a very... Sl sly thing to say. Like, it was the ratings. Obviously, the ratings were not an issue. Actually, I have the, the, the facts right in front of me. Actually, Last Man Standing was the second highest rated comedy on ABC. The second highest rated comedy on ABC. And then it was the third highest rated scripted show on ABC. Let me say that again. Last Man Standing was the second highest rated comedy on ABC, and it was the third highest, high, highest rated scripted show on ABC. And it was, only, it was the only show out there for a conservative audience. And a little before this, Tim Allen went on Jimmy Kimmel and talked about how, you know, the, the media and Hollywood today is like... 1930s Germany, where if you don't say the right things, you don't believe what everybody else believes, they will come at you. And it's sad. It's incredibly sad. And then, and then Tim Allen admitted that he went to Trump's inauguration. What happens several weeks later? Last Man Standing gets canceled. It just seems too convenient to say it was the ratings. It was scheduling. Clearly... That's not the case. It was your second highest rated comedy on ABC. It was a, your third highest rated scripted show on ABC. And you want to cancel it. It makes no sense. No sense at all. As to why you would want to get rid of a show that has a, a good following and is getting high ratings. And the only real... Logical explanation, because of how, unfortunately, how liberal the media is, is that it was canceled because it was a show supporting Donald Trump, President Donald Trump. And I'm not saying we need to enforce conservative viewpoints and conservative ideals down people's throats. We need to, we need to just change the whole world, make it conservative. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying... There needs to be a balance between conservatives and liberals. And unfortunately, liberals have the upper hand. They have completely taken over the media and have, have canceled anything, anyone's opinion, anybody who supports Trump, anybody who likes Trump, anybody who is a conservative in general, maybe not even liking Trump, but just a conservative, just completely canceling out their ideals, 
their opinions and their voice. And if liberals are so he are so set on believing in equality for everybody, why are we leaving out conservatives? Makes no sense. It makes absolutely no sense. And I don't want to make this an opportunity to hate on liberals. I have a lot of friends who are liberals, and they are some of the nicest people I know. One of them is actually my best friend. <laughs> but I all I'm saying is I just want to live in a world where the conservative voice is heard and not shut down and looked down upon. And I want to live in a world where we can actually have meaningful conversations about Donald Trump and not just spew out lies and, and criticisms and hate. Is he a perfect human being? No. Is he a perfect president? Well, I would have said so other I would have said otherwise a couple of days ago, but after the recent couple weeks, no, he's not a perfect president and no one is. Obama was never a perfect president, in my personal opinion. No president is perfect. But Trump is trying his best, and the last thing he needs is the media breathing down his neck, just spewing lies and hate and discrimination to him. And it's, it's, it's hypocritical because, yes, Trump was a bully back in the day. But the media has turned into a huge bully. It makes me mad. It makes me mad that we can't have meaningful conversations and really break down the good and the bad that President Trump is doing. And it's a shame that because the media is so liberal that shows like Last Man Standing have to fall victim of this liberal mindset that's being forced down people's throats. So... I'm getting on a rant now. I'm going to stop. But to conclude this conversation, this topic of the week, let me just say this. The, the, I, want to, I really want to see the true, the true uh, motives behind canceling Last Man Standing. I don't buy into the idea that this was canceled because of ratings and sketching because clearly that was never an issue. Second highest rated show on ABC. Third highest scripted show on ABC. Excuse me, highest rated scripted show on ABC. To say that your ratings were an issue makes no sense to me. And obviously the facts say otherwise. That the ratings were an issue. And I hope that the world does not turn their back on Tim Allen and the conservative audience, and conservative entertainers like Tim Allen. And all I want, all I ask of the media, of ABC, of everybody listening, all I ask is for a fair and equal, a fair voice for conservatives and liberals. I want everybody to have a chance to voice their opinion. I want supporters of Trump and non-supporters of Trump to be – to have meaningful conversations about these things and not be shunned out because, oh, well, you support that orange racist loser. Let's try and make peace, guys. Let's try and have a world where we can talk about these things. Clearly, not one voice or the other is going to win. As much as I would love for that, if, if I lived in a world where all that was her was my opinions and my ideals and everybody agreed, I think we'd be in a much happier world. But obviously it doesn't work. That Obviously it does not work that way. So I ask all of you, liberals, conservatives, Republicans, Democrats, independents, uh, non-political people, everybody alike, anybody who has an opinion and wants their opinion to matter. Just respect other people's opinions and let's have – let's make a world where we can speak together as conservatives and liberals together. Just everybody have a conversation where we don't shun out opinions because of the way we think is different. And to ABC, I hope you reconsider canceling 
your second highest rated comedy on ABC. I hope that you do not leave Tim Allen, a man who has called your place home for the past five years. I, do not, I hope you do not leave him in the dust. And I hope that you will help create a world where we can speak together as conservatives and liberals, all with different voices and all having a mature conversation about what is right and what is wrong. That's my topic of the week. Sorry, I got a little politically charged there. Um, it th That just got... I've been talking about it a lot on Facebook, and it's just gotten to the point where... I need a place to vent, guys. <laughs> and this is where this is where it is. But uh, seriously, I, I really do want there to be um, a non-discriminatory discriminatory dialogue between conservatives and liberals. And I want liberals to have their say, even though I don't agree with it. I want them to have their say, but I want conservatives to have a say, too. Well, that's it for you guys. Um, I have a shout-out for the week. I didn't have one last week, but this week I do. Um, I want to make a shout-out to Jackie Minton. She is a singer-songwriter who goes to my school here at JP Catholic, and she is probably one of the most talented singers I've ever heard uh, that I've had the pleasure of knowing. And I really hope she takes off. I go hope you guys listen to her music. I'll link it in the description below. Um, maybe we'll get her on the podcast because she is an artist and we like to have artists on the show. Maybe, I don't know. Jackie, if you're watching, that invitation is open. It is your decision. So, yeah, shout out to Jackie. Follow her music and check it out. All right, well, that's all I got for you guys. Thank you for watching this episode of the Vince Lionel Podcast. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button and subscribe to my YouTube channel. We can check out my short films my trailer reactions, and more episodes of the Vince Lionel Podcast. I'll see you guys next Monday for another brand new episode. Thanks for watching. God bless, and peace out. Okay.